everyone, we are back talking about Replenish the Earth, the Ministry Life Cycle, and the topic is growth. Today, we're going to be dealing with unresolved issues. An unresolved issue um, can become an idol, and if we don't resolve the issue, the idol could um, cause us to have issues. Um, idols we fail to dethrone and sexuality untamed are characteristics from the environment of this world. So unresolved issues can come on as things that we've adapt, adapted. Uh, even in some cases, some um, religious uh, re, 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 religion and religious spirits, for example, um, they can become things that we've exalted above the knowledge of God. And if you don't dethrone them, they can become an unresolved issue. Let me read First John 2 verse 16. And it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Alright, so, what is an unresolved issue? Uh, it, as long as it's unresolved, and you know it's there, then there's something that keeps you disconnected from the Lord. So, we got to think about how do we maintain our connection with the Lord? Because your connection is your life source. You need that life source for creativity. And anytime, so when you think about your creativity and when you think about having moments where you're stuck and you can't create or you're having a problem finishing something, think about any unresolved issue. An example of an unresolved issue is something that you fail to put under or dethrone, right? Some understanding that you fail, when you fail to understand, that means you fail to come under, be, uh, under a stance, right? Um, something that needs to be dethroned. Um, I, on this slide, I actually wrote sex, sexuality untamed because... Some, for some people, especially in the creative areas, um, sexuality tends to be an issue. And if, if you're not in alignment with the Word of God with regards to your sexuality, then that could hedge, um, that could really just cause an issue for you. Um, and um, that's not really what you want to have happen in and around your life. All right, so... Um, anything that poses itself as something that um, that's a block between your relationship and you can be between your relationship with God um, is something that look can look like an unresolved issue and it needs to be dethroned. Okay, all right. Now, in addition to the unresolved issues. Um, on this particular slide, we look at the unresolved issues um, that existed with uh, Jacob. Um, and it, re it caused Jacob to meet at Bethel, meet God at Bethel. So any unresolved issue should cause an individual to go back to the source. And in this particular case, um, you see that Jacob returned to Bethel. And Bethel means house of worship. And you can read more about that in Genesis 35, verses 1 to 4. It's a place where God strips us of the identities we've taken on. Um, and, and bear in mind, some people have taken on identities unbeknownst to even themselves because that's how they've been all along. For example, if you've been a performer all along, and you, then you may have an issue with not knowing who you really are when you're not a performer. If you responded to uh, the praise or the criticism of people, um, that could have an impact on who you are. And if you've exalted that image above who you are, who God made you to be, then it can become an unresolved issue. Jacob was known as a trickster, right? But God established Jacob to be called Israel. And so he had to go back to Bethel to get a vision from God about who he was supposed to be. Again, you have the view of the people, and then you have God's intention. Going back to Bethel reestablishes who you're supposed to be and what's supposed to happen um, in your life. Okay, 
So often, um, death and loss are used to get our attention so that we can effectively communicate with God and get directions for our life and ministry. With that, we're going to go on to the next assignment questions. And, the, and this is a threefold question. The first question is, how does fivefold ministry help out with this statement? Um, those of you that don't know fivefold ministry, fivefold ministry comes from a scripture in the New Testament that says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some evangelists, some teachers um, for the, for the um, edifying of the body of Christ. Okay, so fivefold ministry working within the church. All right, so these are aspects of fivefold ministry. Preacher, apostle, um, excuse me, pa um, pastor, apostle, prophet, uh, evangelist, and teacher. All right? So now, how does the fivefold ministry help out with the statement? Aligning your vision with people of like minds can assist you in accomplishing your ob objective and expand your reach and efficacy. Okay. So how does the alignment of your vision with like people assist you in your objectives to reach, expand your reach, and expand your efficacy or your efforts or your effectiveness? All right? And that's the first question. That's a loaded one. The second question, what do you think um, the stage represents and where is it? And when I say stage, I can replace stage with platform um, some people might say pulpit. It just depends on what aspect of music and arts ministry you're in. So what do you think the stage represents? The platform or the pulpit? Or, um, yeah, your, what does it represent and where is it? Okay? Um, and that is a little bit of a trick question, so I want you to think about that. And the third and final question is, how can one determine where their ministry stage is? Who would you say you're called to minister to? And specifically, what evidence exists that leads you to this conclusion. And those are the questions for this week. I look forward to hearing from you.